Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I'm pleased to welcome you this month to meet the IFA 17 Expert Life event. I'm joined today by Mark Miller, Legerity Global IFA 17 Leads, to answer your question here live. Hi, Mark. How are you doing today? Hello. Yeah, very good. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so before we start, I just wanted to share a few good news uh, with you. We are really delighted to welcome Bourouge and Swan in the Legerity family. So for people who don't know, Bourouge is a publicly traded short-term insurance company headquartered in Saudi Arabia. EY and Legerity partnered together to help Bourouge with their IFS 17 and IFS 9 transformation. Swan is one of the leading insurers in Eastern Africa, offering a variety of services, including life insurance and general insurance. They selected Legerity for two main reasons, the flexibility of our solution and our ability to successfully deliver IFS 17 to our customers. So we're really pleased to have the two new customers and actually a few other uh, joining Legerity. So today we will focus on one specific topic, data. We received a number of questions um, that around this subject, and it will be good to address those questions today with you, Mark. Sure. Yes. Um, we will start uh, with the question we received from the website, and then if you have any comment, any question, you can write them in the comment section on LinkedIn. As a reminder, you can ask all those questions at info at legeritifinancials.com or in the comment section, as I just mentioned. So let's start. The first question is, we want to start the IFS 17 project, but our IT team are asking us to clarify the data requirements. How can we get about this? Yeah, good question, and one one we get all the time in the throughout the the cycle of talking to insurance companies and, and heading off into the project. You know, I think um, well, the good news is, is certainly for us, we've been involved in a lot of projects now, so we have a very clear view of what the overall data requirements are for IFRS seventeen. But having said that, not every insurer is the same, and so from if you think about the full scope of of data that might be needed to cover all types of insurers all accounting policy choices, it's quite large. Um, and so really when you're talking to your IT team, you know, the first thing you've got to think of is scope. So scope in terms of how it applies to your business. So, you know, not every insurer has every product. So of course uh, that narrows, that can narrow things down. And then, you know, that then leads you to think about things like the, the grouping, the measurement model. So there's a fair few accounting policy choices that you need to make as well. And then, and then within that, you've got to start thinking: How am I going to? How do I want to see the data? So you know, you can focus on disclosures, and certainly for our Fast Post Express, we take a look at exactly what is needed for the disclosure requirements, and from that, we can deduce a, a very succinct set of data requirements that deliver just that. Um, but when you think, okay, how am I going to explain this to my stakeholders and you know, how do I relate it to what's going on in my business, there may well be additional factors that you want to, you want to bring in. And that can also be connected to your underlying processes. So in order to define uh, your data requirements, um, at a high level, you know, people like us, we can really help you with that activity, identify the main data types, but to really go beyond in a meaningful way with your IT team, you need to be clear about the scope and, and certainly have um, um, your accounting policies at least shaped up in a reasonably well-defined form. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, Mark. And actually the, the question that goes straight away after that is, what are the main types of data needed for IFS 17? Yeah, well, I think you only have to look at your you know, system landscape and that will give you a clue about what you need for RFS 17 because pretty much RFS 17 covers accounting for insurance contracts. And so everything to do with those contracts uh, will ultimately be providers of data. So your policy administration system, you need to know all about your policies, how they relate to 
uh, the portfolios that you're going to choose to measure in IFRS 17. So that's one big area. You have all of your actuals, you know, the, the interactions uh, financially with the customers, the premiums and paying out claims. Uh, and then, of course, the, the operating of the contracts and those sorts of data may well come from the general ledger. So policy administration systems, actual operation, finance operation systems and um, GL data like you know expenses things like that those will be absolutely core and of course the one big area you're probably wait, waiting for me to mention is of actuarial data so i 17 is a finance um standard it's an accounting standard so you know it needs to be thought of in that regard but it's heavily driven from actuarial outputs so you know in the insurance industry it's all about trying to look into the future, understanding how you can model the policies, what's going to happen to them, and what sort of risks are associated with those um, uh, policies. And so a major category of data is actually forward-looking modeled data. So when you know, certainly when you're looking at the solution, um, you know, the modeling aspect needs to be taken into account. The modeling will have data requirements of its own. So typically those, those actual transactions, those uh, policy details will need to be fed into the modeling view as well as as the accounting view so i think we can broadly summarize you know the key uh, data types are, are modeling data so forecast data your actual transactions and of course your policies contracts um, that relate to those items wonderful wonderful and actually the next question is for people who have already done some things with IFS uh, 4, what will be the main differences with IFS 17 versus data we need now to drive IFS 4? Yeah. Yep, uh, so that's a fairly big topic, I suppose. Uh, how can we narrow it down? Well, I think the, the first thing to say is that a key thing about IFS 17 is the grouping of the contracts, I would say. So the grouping of the contracts and the locking of those contracts into the uh, IFRS 17 groups. That's something that's quite new, that level of aggregation. Uh, so all the data around that, how you group your contracts uh, ready for the accounting. And I suppose in particular, you have to kind of measure are they profitable or or onerous. So, so that's quite a big, big difference, I think, compared to IFRS 4. And then I think you just have the new accounts. Uh, so, you know, like the CSM contractual service margin, the risk margin, these are things that may be um, you're related to processes that you have now, but under IFRS 17, they're much more well-defined and explicit in how they should work. So with the CSM, you're going to have um, you know, coverage units in order to release the CSM. Uh, and then um, in, the, in the PAA model, it's quite similar to IFRS 4, but there's some subtle differences in the way the liability for remaining coverage is, is different and that can drive particular data requirements around measuring the premium and the, the acquisition cost. So I suppose the, at the end of the day, you know, nothing's changed with the business. You're still an insurance company. So all those transactions with your customers are, are still the same and they need to be accounted for under IFRS 17, just as they were under IFRS 4. But the, the way that the, the, the policies are modeled and the data associated with that and the balances that you need to look at is is quite different under IFRS 17 and that drives really the the differences in the data requirements um yeah so i think that's the answer there nicholas yeah and actually you you mentioned something interesting there um about the different measurement models so do the different measurement models have specific data requirements for IFRS 17 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think the as I mentioned, PAA. So PAA is designed to simplify the data requirements, and and I think it certainly does that. So for general insurers, you know, you don't have to measure the CSM, the fulfillment cash flows. So you know, it it te it tries to to help you, and it's a bit closer to to IFRS four. But nevertheless, um, you know, the the you shouldn't underestimate and i think we did a webinar on the, the data the, the difficulties of paa simplified but not simple i think we called it um so there are specific data requirements around paa um and then you have the vfa model so the the the, the basic model is the general model principle but then around vfa this is covering a particular product set so you're going to have specific data around there you know, firstly just eligibility for vfa so you know you need to understand the policies what 
what's in the policies and and have a process for can you um, apply VFA and actually similarly with POA you need to cover the eligibility criteria and then so around VFA you've then got all of the additional data associated with those participating features so VFA covers particular product types that have investment features within them uh, and so that drives an additional data requirement and that can be a headache actually for insurance companies because the asset management side is quite separate from the um, uh, insurance side whereas the VFA kind of integrates that together so there are some specific challenges around VFA but even within the general model there are some exceptions we, we refer to something we call modified the general model again associated with products with investment features and that can have additional data requirements where you know you're required to account for some of the finance investment effects separately and of course we mustn't forget reinsurance we recently did a webinar on on reinsurance so the measurement models cover insurance contracts but uh the ifa 17 also applied to seeded reinsurance so there are variations of the measurement models for both reinsurance measured under the general model and under the premium um the paa model so uh the the, the reinsurance contracts we also find has some specific data specific data requirements that shouldn't be underestimated most notably the uh the need to account for for gains on the reinsurance contracts where you have underlying um onerous contracts and that data is is quite tricky to produce because you need that full mapping of your reinsurance contracts to your insurance contracts and to understand you know some of the well, let's, let's just call them percentages if you like that okay. need to apply for some of those complex calculations again i'd probably refer you to one of our other webinars on that but yeah so to summarize yeah each of the measurement models does have different data requirements um and then certainly you need to look carefully and don't underestimate uh, the data requirements on the reinsurance side i would say yeah, and, and you're totally right. We did two very interesting uh, webinars, the uh, PAA Simplified But Not Simple and the reinsurance one that you can access on our website. I definitely recommend for people watching to go there. Just a reminder for uh, people who have questions, if you have them live here, you can ask them in the comment section or even after the event on info at legeritifinancials.com. So now the, the next question we receive is like, it's in your experience, what are some of the data items that insurers struggle most with? Hmm. Yeah, so as again, I suppose uh, quite a long uh, topic. Every, every insurer is unique, um, but I suppose I suppose the first thing is probably around the modeling. So, you know, as I talked about before, you know, the, the modeling outputs are a key part of IFS 17. And depending on the mature, maturity and skills of your modeling team, you know, re, recutting the models so they take into account the IFS 17 groups and the IFS 17 processes, that can be quite a challenge. So don't underestimate that in your, in your project. Um, but if I was to sort of talk about a specific subject area, uh, I would probably pick acquisition costs because acquisition costs are an area that maybe get a little bit overlooked in IFRS 4. Um, and there are some quite specific considerations that we need to take into account in IFRS 70 related to those. <clears throat> so you have pre-coverage acquisition cost payments. And then, of course, we've got the grouping of acquisition costs into um the IFRS 17 group so that creates some challenges because often the way that the underlying operational processes work around commissions and channel payments and things like that don't naturally relate you know link themselves to the IFRS 17 groups and the timing of coverage and and aspects like that and the, the standard was amended so that you can actually defer acquisition costs to future groups so I think in our discussions you know you have your actuarial team very happy with <laughs> The, the modeling potentially and then you know you've got your finance teams who are all over the the premiums and the claims payments things like that but then the acquisition costs can sometimes slip through the net so i certainly would recommend 
you know, well, it, it's normally a case when we go into our projects that we lift the lid on some of those processes. And if you think about reinsurers and London market style companies, some of the practices that have been used in the past have meant that that whole area, the data flows aren't, aren't great um, in terms of level of aggregation, timing and, and transparency. So if I was to pick one area, that would be my area, I think. Acquisition yeah. got. Well, definitely, definitely. And now to get back to one of the things you were mentioning uh, a little bit earlier around the granularity. Um, one of the questions we see in our analysis of the data, it seems one issue we have is the level of granularity required. It's a challenge. Do you have any recommendations? Mm, certainly, this is something we see across the patch uh, in all of our projects and you, know, you only have i mean i suppose you could say three main areas so i covered acquisition costs so a lot of the time the acquisition cost payments don't naturally relate themselves to the rfs 17 groups you know we think about the not onerous groups the onerous groups you know the channel's probably not taking those things into account um expenses typically very high level in the general ledger, you know, department type expenses, you know, that do, again doesn't relate to the RFS 17 unit of account. And then, you know, you've got, you've got calculations sitting in the actuarial space. So risk margin, risk adjustment, those kind of calculations may not um, naturally lend themselves to the RFS 17 unit of account. So that is um, a common challenge across those areas and many other areas. And, and the one thing that we've really seen uh, a lot of our clients take um, you know, make use of in terms of our solution is the allocation engine. So we're in IFRS 17, we're obviously trying to convert our data into accounting transactions. And if the you know, the data is not at the right level of granularity, then the allocation engine is a fundamentally useful piece of um, software that can create all kinds of processes to get that data into the right level. And, you know, we initially used to do you know some sort of percentage allocations to some expenses or, or something like that. But we've increasingly over time seen that more sophisticated allocations are required by insurers. So allocating using balances or or creating allocations that have more than one step to them. Um, and then you know integrating allocations into the workflow. So qu quite often some of the allocated data needs to actually go back upstream into the system, into data layers or into the modeling output. So my, my key recommendation is incorporate an automated, you know, controlled, audited allocations um, functionality into your solution, because you'll find that's absolutely vital. And, you know, not only does that solve some of the granularity issues, but it also allows you to continue to create an end-to-end -end automated hands-off process that also has that wraparound with the system you know controls that you you would want to see in your end-to-end -end solutions and what's need what you need to avoid i think is creating end user computer solutions upstream to create that level of granularity and that's quite tempting um it's 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 easy easy for users to say i'll do that on small database here or spreadsheet here but, you know my, my recommendation would be to embed that in the solution and there's still time to do that i think in the rfs 17 journey so that's that's my recommendation yeah yeah, yeah. no that's that's very interesting and, and we have two more questions but they're very very similar it's around uh data gaps and data quality so let me ask two questions and then you can answer them. It's how should we handle data gaps and data quality issues? And then actually the extension of this question is as time is moving fast, we're concerned we will not have time to address those data issues. And what would be your suggestion to mitigate all that? Yeah, well, I mean, you have to apply the lens of materiality. So, you know, you need a, a clear view on materiality and you you should not allow your project to be derailed while you spend a lot of time working out how to fix some of the issues. So, you know, having a framework that allows you to identify what are the what are the issues and then being able to assess them for materiality is key. Obviously, if they're fundamental and they're material, then you're going to have to fix them at, at some level. Um, vendors like us who've got very flexible rules engine you know we can configure a lot of rules that are helping our clients mitigate some of these they're obviously on a case-by-case -case basis but we we have our out-of-the-box product but then we can look to receive data in 
you know, customized ways from clients and we can incorporate uh, rules that, that help manage some of those uh, data issues, those data gaps, those data transformations. Uh, and that helps maintain that, as I said, that, that kind of automated process and not resorting to end user computing solutions further upstream. Um, but as I said, don't, don't let your project get derailed by data issues. And so if you do need to put some sticking plasters in in the beginning to fix them, then 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 I would say do that to make sure you you get over the line. But have in mind that you want to put uh, you know, you know, th this this investment in IFRS 17 is a good chance to open the lid and work out uh, what you can do to better improve your data environment and your automation of your your processes. Um, and so take the chance to do that. Um, and and you know have that sort of wish list if you like coming out of the project that allows you to continue working on that once you've got your your compliance sorted and, and safe uh, and then you know you can have an architecture where you can look at addressing those issues you know in a roadmap when you've got the resources and time to to manage it well brilliant thank you very much actually this uh, brings us to the end of today meet the expert session mark a big thank you for all your insights yeah thank you thank you for the great questions again no problem so now for the for the next event due to popular demand we will focus on implementation stuart eden our ceo will join us for this event so don't hesitate to ask any of your questions on info at legeritifinancials.com prior to the event or if you have questions during the event, ask them in the comment section live. So now to finish, a quick word about Legerity. As many of you know, Legerity, at Legerity, we developed our award-winning IFS 17 uh, solution based on three principles. Enterprise-grade functionalities, out-of-the-box configuration, fast-tracked implementation. Legerity Fastpost has been recognized by the industry and insurance EIM as the leading solution for IFS 17 compliance. We believe that tackling IFS 17 in the right way will help you streamline and de-risk your project, as well as deliver transformational benefits that will go far beyond IFS 17. If you're interested in hearing uh, more about legality, you can contact us on our website to arrange a call with our FS17 experts. I also invite you to follow us on LinkedIn to receive notification for future events, webinar, and other IFS17 related material. And speaking of webinars, we mentioned two webinars uh, previously, but our next webinar on the 18th of May will be held uh, on implementation of IFS 17 for general insurance. The link can be found on our website if you want to register. On that note, I just want to thank you and wish you a very good rest of the week. Thank you, bye. Ladarity FastPost is cloud native. Architected specifically for the cloud, from enterprise cloud security to ultra high performance processing. Leveraging all the benefits of hosting, provisioning, and enablement from market-leading platforms such as AWS. We operate at the highest level of enterprise security with the experience managing local, regional, and global regulatory and data compliance. The benefits of cloud are transformative. FastPost delivers agility and on-demand provisioning, giving greater choice, SaaS and PaaS delivery models, reducing complexity and maintenance costs while moving a CapEx spend to OpEx. FastPost brings together the best of cutting edge application design with ultra high performance system architecture and the latest in-memory data grid technology. By using networked servers, the in-memory data grid pools resources, allowing applications to scale across the cluster. Millions of transactions can be processed in minutes. FastPost delivers linear scalability, so clients pay for exactly what they need when they need it, and can be assured that additional computer power is there on demand. Our advanced disaster recovery support has the fastest return to operations times available, from hot to warm standby, or calibrated to your own SLAs. 
FastPost is the highest performing accounting rules platform on the market. In the length of time it took to watch this video, our customers have processed millions of transactions. Legerity, it's our business to take care of yours.